All right, guys, welcome back to uh, Do It All Garages World Headquarters. I uh, got a new project for my 18 foot trailer. Uh, if you're not familiar with that video, I purchased a 18 foot, basically a car hauler, sort of. You know, I wouldn't haul like a dually or anything on it, but normal cars would be fine. Anyway, 18 foot trailer. And uh, my buddy's been letting me keep it in his storage unit for quite a while. So basically, we kind of had an agreement. Um, he has a classic Ford pickup, which you'll see later on. And uh, it's down, it's about an hour away from here, from where we live in Houston. And uh, he, I told him if he lets me keep my trailer there, then I will haul his truck from Houston to Conroe, Texas, where we live. Again, about an hour away and uh here it is about six months later and we're finally about to get around to doing that but problem is the truck doesn't run it's been sitting a while it's in good shape it's all there but it's just been sitting needs a tune-up basically needs to be gone through and uh i'm not going to drive an hour and hope that we can push that thing up on my trailer so i got a solution for that yesterday and there it is Got the uh, good old Hobo Freight Badland ZXR 12,000 pound winch. Uh, item number's right there, 59407. Ooh, 26 foot a minute, no load line speed. That's fancy, man. Basically, I'm going to mount this on my trailer and uh, see what happens. So... I what a, another thing I plan to do is get a cover for this. They actually sell covers online for winches this size, and uh, I'm not going to be mounting it in a toolbox or anything like that. And after I move my friend's truck up here, after I move his truck up here, the trailer is going to be stored in a different location, and it will be stored outdoors. So I don't want to ruin this winch, man. I, I missed an eighty dollar off sale by about five minutes i was gonna go to harbor freight and buy this thing they had them on sale for 2.99 they had a coupon that anybody could use didn't have to be a inside track club member or anything and uh i saw that coupon and i was like dang i need to go go grab one well there's one in conroe pretty close to my house but it was a sunday and uh I looked at what time it was on my phone and it was 5.55 and they close at 6 on Sunday. So, whatever. Cry me a river, okay? Had to end up paying full retail for this thing. Believe me, I went in there and tried and asked them if they'd still honor the coupon and they said no. So, here it is. I'm unboxing this bad boy right now. Got the instructions. Might need those, might not. Got a pack of bolts, doesn't look ripped open. Uh, looks like a fairly stout hook on here. And a, uh, I don't know, I guess a little uh, thing to go on the hook. Got a wired remote, I believe that's a 12 foot cable on that. Uh, looks like a negative battery cable right there. Zip tie. Hopefully, yeah, okay. I was going to say, man, hopefully there's more uh, wires in here. So there is. There's the, I guess, control box or whatever. Got the, uh, huh. Got the fairly, this thing is freaking massive, dude. Wow. Thing's big. Um, I do have the tools the equipment and the scrap steel or whatever, I can make my own winch mount. This thing was 53 bucks. It's already got the, uh, you know, the holes in it for the fair lead, all that. So it's, uh, I feel like it was, feel like it was well worth the 53 bucks, man. My main problem with fabricating things it's not so much cutting and welding the metal together. It's measuring where the holes go and actually drilling the holes. I have not found a set of drill bits yet 
that will not burn up after about five or six holes. I mean, I'm talking cheap ones, expensive ones, cobalt, everything. I don't have a drill press. I don't have room for a drill press. And uh, so 53 bucks, it's done basically. So that was my uh, point. So anyway, I am basically what I'm going to do first. I'm going to take this sucker out of here. And I'm going to see which holes it mounts in. And those holes, um, I'm going to mark them off. And then I'm going to go grab my trailer and go to Tractor Supply and grab some bolts. And uh, I'm going to lay this thing on my trailer and drill the holes and, you know, make sure the bolt holes line up. Then I'm going to bolt the winch onto the mount and then mount it to my trailer and put the bolts in. So... Stay tuned, that's what I'm gonna be doing. Okay guys, so uh, right off the bat, I'm noticing my first issue here. And you know, believe me, I know that this stuff doesn't always go silky smooth. Matter of fact, it rarely does. But this right here, this Badland Winches winch mount, uh, let me show you, item number, six two four four six and they always change the item numbers on these things like these winches have like 12 different item numbers but they're pretty much the same so first thing i'm noticing is the since this one comes with a wire cable and not synthetic rope it comes with a roller fair lead instead of a smooth hoss fair lead so the issue these holes line up right here. Okay, let me do this with one hand. Let me see if I can straighten this out. I'll show you. So, like about right there, that's where the, the holes line up just fine. Okay. Uh, they line up, but if you're planning to mount this winch mount to a flat surface, do you see how much further that sticks down? That's an issue. Um, it can be an issue anyway, depending on where you're mounting it. So I got to try to work around that. Um, I'm going to have to figure something out. So I just wanted to point that out to you. Oh, and one more thing. When I was unboxing, I didn't open this up. It looks like they come with a, uh, a battery cutoff switch right here so that's pretty cool i didn't know they came with that so anyway just want to point those things out to you uh just so you know like if you're planning on mounting this to a like let's say you have a steel deck trailer and you're uh planning on just mounting it to a flat surface that ain't gonna work you would have to switch it to synthetic rope and get a smooth haul spare lead with no rollers on it, which you can do. You can purchase those. It's fine. But, uh, or you would have to cut a, uh, a little hole in your trailer so that fair lead roller can sit down in there. Me, I was going to basically bolt it to the wood of my trailer, which I know is not ideal, but I've been super busy working. I've got jobs still waiting on me right now. And I just don't have time to do all the fab work. I, like I said, I could have built my own winch mount, but the main thing is time. So that's why I bought this one. So we're, I'm going to have to figure something out, but I will figure something out. I'm going to make this happen. So just pointing that out to you. Keep it in mind when you purchase these. All right, guys, beautiful, warm, but not hot, sunny day here in Conroe, Texas. And uh, so the progress I got done yesterday, let me just show you. Got my trailer home, went and pulled it out of my buddy's storage. Um, man, you know, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but the plan was to mount this winch onto the mount and basically bolt it across the wood like that because, you know, I'm never gonna pull 10 or 12,000 pounds with this thing because this trailer won't even hold that much weight. The max weight I can put on this thing is about 5,000 pounds and it will be maxed out and I'm just not going to do that. So 
that was the plan, but I wanted to have like a winch that was overkill so I know it wouldn't burn it up or, you know, struggle to pull anything that was three to 5,000 pounds or whatever onto it. Well, so that's why I figured it'd be okay to mount it to the boards. Well, that thing that I showed you with the fair lead mount sticking down below there kind of put a hitch in my giddy up here, okay, so to speak. Because the only way, there's two ways I could get around that. I could trim out the board to where it would sit down in there. The bottom of that, uh, what do you call it, fair lead, would sit down in the wood. Or I could lay another, you know, 2 by 6 or 2 by 8 underneath of that mount and raise it up. But then it'd be easier for it to rip out of the board and all that. So I'm going to do it the hard way. <clears throat> And I'm going to mount that mount right here. And in order for me to do that, I have to cut this brace out. And then I've got some square tubing that I'm going to lay about right here. And basically the winch mount is going to sit right about in here. And uh, that way the cable can go through here. So, but first, before I do that, I've got to move the dirty dodge gonna park that down there and then I have to move my pressure washing trailer out of the garage because my welders are over there the plugs for my welders are over here I'm probably gonna have to pull out at least one four-wheeler and move some of this stuff got to hook the uh, Vandito up to the pressure washing trailer to move it out before I can even access anything because I've got to cut some steel. I've got my saw on that table, which is packed full of junk, so I'll probably end up cutting it on the floor. So, uh, yeah, probably got 30 minutes to an hour of work to do before I even start working. Y'all know how that goes, some of you. So there is some uh, future plans to uh, ooh, get some. Anyway, there are some uh, future plans to uh, eliminate these problems uh, along the lines of a shop. I haven't decided which way I'm going to go. Don't want to divulge too many details yet, but uh, getting in a, if everything stays on track, I'll be in a financial position to where I can move and uh, either have, buy a place that already has a shop on it, like a legit shop, or I. Uh, buy a place with enough land to where I can build a shop. Anyway, back to the uh, objective at hand here. I'm going to get all this crap moved and uh, get my welders pulled out and we will see what happens. Alright guys, so uh, I'm going to take my plasma cutter. I was thinking about doing it with a grinder, but that's not going to work. There's too many weird tight spots, so I'm going to take my plasma cutter and remove that brace.
Okay, so I ended up having to cut it from the bottom because the nozzle of the plasma cutter just wouldn't fit down in here tight enough. And I got some grinding to do right there. I'm gonna have to clean that up, repaint it, of course, but so just to give you a better idea, that's gonna sit kind of right there. And uh, I've got to weld some brackets to kind of hold it up about right there. I'm trying to do this with one hand, but you get the idea. So hopefully uh, I can make something pretty strong and make it happen. So let's see. Okay, guys, so I've got some 3 uh two-inch square tubing right here. Uh, just kind of mocking it up a little bit, but you get the idea. It's going to stand up about like that. I got to weld it to the bottom, um, weld it to here, and then I'm going to come off of here and do like a, a gusset brace sort of thing. Again, I'm not going to be, you know, picking up excavators and stuff with this thing. It's, you know, I what I may even do is come off of here where I just cut that brace and weld it to the back of this. I'll probably end up doing that too because uh make it a lot stronger if I did that. All right, well, I'm going to keep going. All right, guys, so here's what I got so far. I uh, laid some uh, beads on there with my MIG welder. This one over here, you know, not too bad for an old stupid guy. Welding it with that MIG 175, it's made by Eastwood. Um, I haven't used this thing in quite a while, maybe got to be over a year, maybe two years or so. Uh, the last time I used it, my welds were super porous man just lots of porosity in my welds it, it just they looked horrible i knew they weren't strong and i had a sneaking suspicion that the gas wasn't getting all the way through to the tip of the gun and i was correct so let me show you what i did so when you open up the side of this it's got this little wing nut right here and that's what clamps the O-rings that are on the shaft of the gun when you stick it in there. You gotta tighten it down real tight. And uh, the gas flows through there and goes through the hose and out the end of the gun. Well, apparently it came loose or something because it was doing the same thing when I just tested it. I was gonna stick weld this, but uh, I figured I'd, I'd use my MIG welder. It makes real they're easy, clean welds, you know, Real easy to make a nice weld with it. Anyway, so basically I loosened that thing up, pulled the gun out, made sure the O-rings were still intact and not torn apart or anything. I put it back in there, tightened it down, and made a world of difference. So, like here's some of the welds. I'll show you. I was just doing a test spot on this piece of scrap metal. That's what your welds look like if you're not getting enough gas. So uh, I'm gonna have to get a 45 foot extension cord. It's like buried back there. I'm gonna have to grab that thing so I can wheel this monstrosity of a welding cart. I'm uh, probably gonna have to take the top two machines off just to lighten it up and roll it down the end of my driveway. It's gonna be a royal pain in the butt, but I'm going to get it done today. Unless I go to jail or something, that's the only thing that's really gonna stop me. Anyway, let me keep on rolling.
Okay, guys. So, got it all welded up. I went ahead and welded some flat bar to that part right there. And uh, I went ahead and braced the main posts. I bent the crap out of this one because I started welding it down here and it drew it back to where there was a huge gap up here. So I had to smack the crap out of it with my sledgehammer, but is what it is. I'm not trying to win beauty contests. This one came out a lot better, but uh, pretty simple, man. You know, if you have, you know, 20 grand worth of tools, you can do this yourself for free. So that was a joke. Basically, uh, I was gonna grind all this smooth where that uh, support was welded on and I got tired of grinding. So I just made sure there was no sharp edges and I'm gonna paint over it. Uh, the paint melted off of here when I was welding underneath it. So I scratched it up with my uh, flap disc, shot some bed liner paint on it and I'm gonna do the same on that. And uh, that's pretty much it, man. I'm gonna take a little break. It's kinda hot out here. I'm gonna let everything cool down wipe everything down, get it painted, and bolt the winch on, and I'll be back. Stay tuned. All right, guys, so finished product. Got it bolted down. Got it all wired up. Here's just a quick wiring diagram. If you don't feel like reading instructions on this box on the back, that first black wire goes to that bottom post down here. The second wire, which is also black, goes over to that post. The third wire goes to your battery, which is red. And uh, the fourth, last black wire goes to this top post right here. You'll also have a negative cable that goes to your battery. And that one, there's a little post on the bottom down there. It's the only one down there. And then this little skinny wire also goes on that bottom post with the negative battery cable so they did also include a battery on and off switch which was really cool you can and an uh, extra piece of positive cable so you can mount that switch and turn your battery on and off thought that was pretty cool but anyway so here she goes i don't have any thing to winch up on here but real simple winch cable or uh, i'm sorry uh, wired remote it's got 12 feet of cable you plug it into the side it's out and that's in pretty simple man so the next time you'll be seeing this thing is when we go pick my buddy's truck up y'all stay tuned if you don't want to miss that thanks a lot